Hello and welcome to this course, How to Lead Virtual Teams. My name is Doug Gray, and I'm not sure. Today's March 18th. I'm not sure if St. Patrick's Day even happened yesterday anywhere in the world. As uh, you all know, the coronavirus has forced all of us to use virtual tools and teams uh, are, are critical as we continue to do our work together. To be clear, there's a bunch of different perspectives on this. One is that we've had um, virtual teams as as long as we've had recorded history. We've always had a fiat from a king or a or some leader that was distributed to some dislocated or remote team, and then they did or didn't do that. But I think we've got uh, a compelling argument for a lot of more significant changes. In fact, to be cut off a bit, but the process is the steps you uh, use. For instance, when you're when you're building a house, when you're uh, determining how to write that pro that that paper, and performance is a measure of how well you do this. So as before, I'm going to give you a little structure, a little agenda. I'm going to share several examples of process software that you could consider adopting in, in your virtual teams and show you ways in which you can track performance. One that most of you probably are not familiar with is a thing called psychological capital. I'll, ex I'll explain it and define it and show how that has massive impact in every business. So the process is sometimes stated, it's sometimes known and sometimes not known. The fact, process evolves. So just as teams adapt to new stimuli, I want you to think about your process evolving in some useful way. I'm a fan of uh, this software vendor, 15.5. I uh, often uh, use objectives and key results. Here's a visual aid and recently wrote a book uh, about this. Behavioral nudges are the ways in which we encourage uh, desired outcomes, desired objectives. So an objective is what you want to do, and a key result are the three or four ways in which you measure your uh, achievement. It's a process. Uh, the, the goalposts don't change, to borrow that metaphor. They're there, and we get closer to them, whether we're on offense or defense, farther back. The point is uh, behavioral nudges are how we've always shaped one another. Now we've got digital tools to do it, and they're tremendous. Uh, a more, I don't know, adopted example from bigger companies is Microsoft Teams. Uh, not only can you then access your, your library of content, but you can create teams within teams within teams, and you can have visual representations using graphs and charts of how uh, well that team is, is progressing. So you get performance data. It's kind of like having a library that uh, has all kinds of amazing tools, and uh, you choose to share that library with, with each other. Uh, when we think about performance, I'm going to lead you with this question. Uh, if I asked you, how well are you performing? It's kind of like asking, are you wealthy? We tend to answer in the first three ways. We'll say, yeah, I know my financial capital. I know my net worth and assets and liabilities. I know what I have. When we measure performance, we sometimes think about human capital. What is it that I know? The knowledge, skills, and abilities. What's the what's what's all that? And it's a it's a good way to measure certain things. We also sometimes measure social capital. Who do you know who knows who knows who knows? And that network is represented in the image uh, there. And social capital, human capital, and financial capital are critical. And they're finite. They're resource-based views of capital, which will accelerate, uh, I hope, in your lifetime, and I hope, in my lifetime. But the fact is, in the last 5% of my life, I'm going to spend everything I know I have on health care. I'm going to forget what I know, and I'm going to forget who I know. That's because they're resource-based views. Another view of capital and another view of performance is called psychological capital, which might be a nerdy term uh, for some of you. But think about who you are becoming. PSYCAP is defined as that possible person who may or may not be better than he was a week ago or a month ago, or she better than she was a week ago or a month ago. So performance is an organic, evolving thing, and PSYCAP is not a mythological concept in any way. In fact, there are four variables that work together, and they have a second-order effect. When you've got all four of these, there's a more significant correlation, you'll see the numbers here, than there would be if you had hope by itself. So let me define them briefly. Hope is the will and the way that will cure cancer or you'll do a better job in your virtual team. Efficacy is your capacity to share information. 
just as I'm spouting stuff now, uh, I speak too fast when I'm excited. I get it. I'm trying to be efficacious. Resilience is our capacity to return to a previous level after a loss or a higher level. The American military is being taught resilience and the loved ones of each of those warriors is being taught resilience. Optimism is a generalized positive affect. We choose to be optimistic or not. You can choose to be pessimistic, but if you choose to be optimistic, you'll live longer, have better health, better relationships with your loved ones and, and others. And all four of these things have this second order effect, which plays out in the workplace. Some people in this program might be thinking about workplace employee engagement scores, but few of you know what I know and some nerds know, and uh, Fred Luthens and his research and others have validated, that employee engagement scores, uh, even though they're at 30% over decades, are higher when people think or feel that they've got hope, efficacy, resilience, and optimism. It could be as high as 71% in your work world. Job satisfaction scores could be as high as 63%. And organizational co commitment, in other words, people's capacity to stay, huh, 70%. Well, why don't we talk about these things? I think it's because we're distracted and we don't hire and we don't reward for hope, efficacy, resiliency, and optimism. You don't need a nine box or a three by three chart. A two by two is more than adequate. Anybody who's a talent risk on the lower left should either be taught about PSYCAP now that you know this much about it or let go. And I'm saying that with um, conviction because all four of these are dynamic variables. Hope is a capacity to, to uh, the, the will and the way to create a better future. That's a belief. Efficacy is your capacity to do your job. Resilience, and that's easily measured. Resilience is that capacity to respond to stress or a loss at a, uh, from a previous uh, experience at the same level or higher. Resiliency can be taught. Optimism can be taught. Well, the uh, upper right and, and other three quadrants are ways in which you can plot your people. Let's say you've got 10 people. If you plot them based on PSYCAP on the left side and the performance on the right side, these are objective measures. There's nothing subjective or funky or fuzzy about that. Why don't we do this more often? I think we could. I think you could in about six minutes. You take your 10 people, you plot them on a higher low, and you determine who you're going to keep. We do this sometimes, sorry for this being cut off, uh, with engagement scores. You probably know of uh, uh, a thing called a net promoter score, NPS. And net promoter score is a common question that a lot of companies, it's the only feedback tool that they use to measure performance. The question is, to what extent would you recommend friends and family to work in your organization? Did you know that it's a logarithmic scale of one to 10? six, seven, eight, nine, and tens are called promoters. Everybody else is a distractor, or detractor, or they're passive. Well, what if you asked a similar question about your virtual team? Is the current information distribution process meeting your needs? It's a one question survey. The goal of it, it's, it's kind of like a mini survey, is for the team to increase that score over time. You could track it over time. A pulse survey is when you ask it once and you take the pulse on a regular frequency. The value for your customers and, and users is obvious. Maybe you know this, but feedback from digital companies is uh, quick and easy. So they can do a, a, an A and a B, say two different home pages on, on a website, and they can look at user responses to B and compare it to A and say, well, we need to go with B because there's more adoption over time. This is how iteration occurs. And uh, based on that feedback, you can look at the performance of any of your customers. I don't, I don't care who it is. And then uh, design better information distribution preferences. If you've got or are aware of a certain sector and a certain geography or a certain gender that needs some maybe product or service, that feedback is gonna define your, your training ahead. So a best practice uh, for process and, and performance is to have really uh, secure, consistent data storage tools. Um, the cloud is a, is a thing that we sort of imagined five or 10 years ago, and now it's ubiquitous. Security, encryption, and regular process status updates are uh, the norm. You click on an unfamiliar website and you might say, 
sure, I'll permit you to accept cookies. And now they are tracking your um, usage of that website. We have more than ever transparent access to information. Well, what does that mean? It can, in fact, shape our behavior. You've probably heard of gamification, points, badges, and levels. These are ways in which we accelerate desired behaviors. And I'm not talking necessarily Farmville or the coolest game that your, your 10 year old or your 20 year old uh, in your life is using. This could also be some uh, service or skills that you want to implement as a virtual uh, task in your team. A quick example is to do a three minute scavenger hunt. Have somebody, you can delegate this task easily. Determine uh, three or five questions that require people to use different tools to do a search to find that, that link, that URL. They send it back and the first to do so gets a five or $10 virtual coupon. It could be that they never redeem that coupon like so many gift cards, or it could be that they get to spend 10 minutes with the boss's boss's boss, or they get a one-to-one -one with uh, an important customer or client. What are we doing? Then we're validating those who are using virtual tools and, and, and increasing, I hope, those desired behaviors. There's lots more examples of best practices, but there's a bunch for you to consider. So I'm going to pause the next tool. We've done one and two. The third tool is to think really specifically about leadership practices.